My name is Maribela, and I was born in a small village in the countryside. There was no electricity or plumbing in our small four-room home. My parents were farmers, so we never had very much. But I didn't need very much either. Family was everything, and we always worked together to make it through the hard times. Every week, the neighborhood gathered together to have a party. Families would bring food to sell and instruments for music. My mother warned us not to drink too much papaya punch because she knew we were scared to walk to the outhouse at night. I drank four cups that night and spent the rest of the time dancing with my eldest sister. The party eventually dwindled and everyone went home. It was late into the night when I decided I couldn't hold it until sunrise. My lamp was the only source of light in the dark countryside. I made my way quickly towards the outhouse. Children here were raised on stories of the monsters in the forest, but I tried my hardest to keep my thoughts away from any possible creatures watching me. I was a few yards away when a noise spooked me. It was a voice, a weak sound I barely made out. Help. As I moved closer, I saw it was a boy around my age. I had never seen him before, so he couldn't have lived nearby. Please help, he said. Are you hurt? I'll bring help. No, please. I just need my mask. If you could find it for me, it shouldn't be too far behind me. Sensing my hesitation, he continues. Please, it's hard to breathe without it. I'm instantly reminded of my brother Alec, who's had asthma since he was two. He has to wear a mask when he helps our father on the farm. I'll be right back, I tell him. I searched the outskirts of the forest for a while before finding the mask. It was strange looking. I'd never seen anything like it before. Not anything like the asthma mask my brother uses. I thought, maybe this boy is from a rich family. I bring him his mask and he quickly thanks me and puts it on. The mask instantly lights up and for some reason I'm not as scared as I think I should be. You sure you don't want help? Where are your parents? I ask him. I just need to catch my breath. I'd like to give you a gift for helping me, he says. The last thing I remember before blacking out was a sharp ringing noise in my ears. Maribella! My mother's voice wakes me up. Come, I need your help! I follow my mom to our plantain tree. She trims off the fruit while I gather them in baskets. I started thinking about the boy, whether it was all a dream. I didn't even ask him his name. Suddenly, the fruit I was holding in my hand begins to grow larger and larger. I drop it and my mother turns to watch the spectacle with me. Get your father, she says to me. Our lives were never the same after that moment. Our farm prospered and all our neighbors grew envious of our good fortune. My family tried not to show it, but I knew they were afraid of me. Every day, my mother would wake me up the moment the sun rose so I can go out into the field and make the fruits and vegetables grow as I thought of that strange boy I met that night. Years passed before I learned a powerful secret. I can grow the food straight from a seed. This changed everything. We would sell crops at unnatural speeds. My parents didn't think about the suspicious neighbors and only thought of the profits we were making. We began to make a lot of enemies. One night, I was in the barn growing seeds when the son of a struggling farmer came to spy on us. Word spread that my parents had sold my soul to the devil. One night, the village gathered together and set our home on fire in an attempt to cast out what they believed to be evil. The smoke was suffocating, and the fire easily consumed our wood house with a thatch roof. The sound of people cheering and yelling woke me up. I grabbed my blanket and tried to smother the flames while screaming at my sisters to wake up. A chunk of roof fell on my eldest sister. We tried to save her, but it was too late. I began to think of the boy and how I wished I'd never met him. Suddenly, the world froze. I could feel the heat, but the flames stopped moving. I quickly grabbed my sister's sleeve and pulled her with me. We managed to escape and met our father and brothers outside. My mother was missing, and I knew by my father's face that she was gone too. My sister ran to him crying, telling him another one of his girls is gone. 
he looked at me and told me to leave his family alone. Heartbroken, I ran with no plan of where I was going. I couldn't even see past the tears welling in my eyes. Suddenly, a large man grabbed me. He was a part of the crazy mob that burnt down my home. He pinned me down, wrapping his rough hands around my neck. I reached up and pushed his face away. He began to age in front of me, older and older, until he turned to dust. I didn't know what was happening to me. And then I saw him. There at the edge of the forest was the strange boy now all grown up. He reached a hand out to me, and I went to take it. <laughs>